Well, hello, 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 and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all fighting fit and well. Look, just quickly, I want to talk to you about a question that I often see on social media um, pertaining to photography, and it comes from uh, people that are uh, just starting out in photography that want to buy a camera. Now, that question uh, goes along the lines of this. Hi, I'm new to photography. I want to buy my first camera. Um, what should I buy? Really, if that's you, I wouldn't be asking that question on these platforms. Seriously, I wouldn't be doing that. I'd be doing your own research and your own homework. But some of the questions you have to ask yourself before you ask questions of others. And a few of those questions are, what's my budget? How, can I, how much can I afford to spend on camera equipment? Because cameras are expensive. A good camera body and a good lenses or lenses and flash units and strobes, they're expensive. So you have to work out what sort of budget you have to spend or have to work with. Next question is what sort of photography do you want to specialize in? Now, you should have some sort of idea. Most people that are getting into this photography seem to want to photograph everything. And that's, that's just the natural way people think when they first start with photography. But really what you should be doing is, is thinking about what sort of photography do you want to do? Do you want to focus on uh, Portrait, portrait photos. You, well, you need a, a lens that'll enable you to take really nice portrait images, like a, a 50 millimeter, even a uh, an 85 millimeter fast lens, or even a 135. But you need to know what sort of photography you want to specialize in. Next thing, if you want to do a sports photography, um, you need a body that can shoot uh, high frames, high frame rates. Um, and then you will almost definitely need some sort of telephoto or zoom lens for this style of photography. Landscape photography, uh, wide angle lens, and probably a medium telephoto. Um, but you need to work out what type of photography you want to do before you purchase your camera equipment. Um, also too, are you planning on taking photos and just putting them on social media such as Instagram and Facebook and all those other things out there. If you're just going to do that, well, you might as well just use your phone um, because most people think, well, I need a lot of megapixels to post images on Facebook and Instagram. Well, you don't, you don't need that. That's just a waste of money if you go and buy a camera with high, that can shoot at high megapixels. Um, but if you're planning on blowing up the big images, well then yes, you need uh, a high, fairly high megapixel camera, but most of the new cameras these days, up around the, anywhere between 18 to 24, some go over 30, 40, even 50, even 100, somewhere around the 20, 24 megapixel range is very, very good if you want to blow up your images to a certain size. But it all comes down to what you want to do with your photography and how much you have to spend. Now, I've seen these questions on these uh, social media platforms and the answers that people are giving, uh, they're okay, but are they, uh, are they for you, you know? I know for a fact that people ask these questions on these platforms and they're more confused there after receiving the answers than they were before they started. So really do your homework and talk to people that have been taking uh, photos and creating really good images for a, a long time. Um, they're the people you need to speak to. Now, I'm telling you here now, um, don't think that you need to go out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a camera and lens and a few other bits and bobs. Well, you can do that. But if you don't understand the principle of photography, which is light and composition and how that all works into creating an image, well, it doesn't matter what how much you've spent on a camera. It just makes you the owner of a very, very expensive camera. So I don't want to see people fall into that trap. So think about what style of photography you want to uh, specialize in and how much have you got to spend on this equipment. You might think you want to buy second hand or used equipment. Nothing wrong with that. I've done that and I still do it because people fall into the trap of going out, spending a small fortune on camera equipment, not knowing what to do with it, and then give the the, um, the hobby or whatever they want to call it up, and the camera sits in the bottom of the drawer collecting dust, and that's when you can get good secondhand buys. So 
you have to work out, as I said, what style of photography you want to do or what you want to specialize in and how much money you've got to spend or what's your budget. Please don't get confused by the various answers you receive on social media platforms, especially the photography platforms, uh, the amateur ones or people that are just dabbling in the in the in the uh, in photography or the photography world, because they're all personal opinions. You need to find out yourself what camera is going to suit you and what camera and lens or what camera equipment is going to suit your style of photography. So before you go out and spend thousands of dollars or even a thousand dollars, do your homework. Look at YouTube. YouTube's pretty good for this. Um, and get on the photography uh, blogs, uh, photography websites, and read uh, what people's comments are on equipment. But please don't buy a camera that you think you need without doing your homework and be very careful when you go into a camera store or online, what people are trying to get you to buy. That's a free tip. That's a very important tip, actually. Don't fall for the salesman's trick. So that's it. That's all I want to talk to you about today is to be mindful before you spend your money, work out what type of photography you want to be involved in and how much you want to spend on that equipment. And I think if you do that, or if you employ those thought or that thought process, I think you'll come out the other end very happy with your purchase. And then you can start your photography journey, which is absolutely fantastic. So that's it for another episode of Sniper Photography. Thank you for listening to this. If you've got any comments, please leave them down below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please feel free to do so by hitting the hitting the subscribe button and the bell next door so you don't miss anything. So until then, be nice to yourself, family and friends, but most of all, you keep shooting, keep smiling and have fun and bye for now.